Our message for this evening, hand in hand with God. What did I say? Hand in hand with God. From the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary in Berrien Springs, Michigan. Randy has traveled all over the globe, lifting up Jesus Christ and proclaiming his everlasting gospel. He lives presently in beautiful Arm Arbor, Michigan. Ann Arbor, Michigan, with his wife, Midas. We are more than happy tonight that he has accepted so graciously a very humble man to come and lift up Jesus Christ in Belize. Let us welcome him with a round of applause and gratitude to God. Lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. God is good and all the time. Let's try that again. God is good and all the time. How many of you love God? May I see your hand? Ah, God is delighted. He really is. You know, I'm told that women love to be told I love you by their husbands or their boyfriends or their ex-boyfriends. They love to be told I love you. God loves to be told I love you. Because God has feelings. God is an intelligent human being. And so he was delighted to see so many hands raised. But you see, God is a God who confirms things. So let us confirm that you really love God. How many of you love God? Can I see your hand? May the Lord bless you eternally and put a double blessing on your children. I welcome you tonight. You have been here for quite a while. So I will give you a short message as somebody say amen. And I know you'll be happy to hear that. Let me welcome those of you watching via... YouTube, Facebook, come on, tell me what they are. Channel 98 and channel 298 and uh, all the other channels that are available. However you are connecting, Zoom, you name it. You know, before the pandemic struck, I had never heard of Zoom. I wish I had invented Zoom now. I would be a millionaire and I could pay for all of this. But uh, however you are con connecting with us, thank you very much and may the Lord bless you. I say that with concentrated seriousness. For those of you watching who are not Seventh-day Adventists, thank you very much. The Seventh-day Adventist Church delights in having guests among us. And so we thank you for taking the time. You could have chosen to watch football or basketball or swimming, but you chose to connect to this program. And God has observed that, and he will bless you. And for those seated before me, if there's anyone right in this building who is not a Seventh-day Adventist, may I see your hand? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist. God bless you. God bless you. Did I miss a hand somewhere? Where? Where did I miss a hand? No, I got all the hands, I believe. Thank you very much. I really mean that. And may the Lord place his hand of mercy upon your lives and guide you right into his kingdom. And we shall look for you tomorrow and the day after, and the day after, and the day after, until we end on December 11 or December 10, I believe it is. December what? July, that's right, July. July. What did I say? I said December. Well, we'd love to have you until December as well. It is now, oh, a quarter to nine, and you look like early sleepers. So I will give you that opportunity as soon as I have finished saying what I came to say. I won't be long. I'll just be as long as the Holy Ghost.
directs me. Let me extend my thanks to your President of the Union, Pastor Slusher, for allowing me to come into his territory and to fellowship with you. I had the pleasure of meeting the Executive Vice, the Executive Secretary, Pastor Jesse. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, in person and via the internet, leadership is not easy. Pray for your leaders. Pray for your pastors. Read about Moses. Moses had it so hard, he asked God to kill him. We don't want Pastor Jesse to say that prayer. We don't want Pastor Slusher to say it or Pastor Gillette. Pray for your leaders. And if you do that, God will be pleased with you because your ultimate leader, of course, is Jesus Christ. And so I thank these men. Pastor Gillette has been very, very gracious to me. God bless you. I really mean that. And I look forward to enjoying myself fully from now until I depart, uh, not December 12, but uh, July 12. Our message for this evening, hand in hand with God. What did I say? Hand in hand with God. Before I begin, do three little favors for me. They're not difficult. One, if you don't need this, and most people seem to need it, if you don't need this, and you're using the old-fashioned Bible, then make sure this is turned off. I think mine is off. So physician, heal yourself. We want to preserve reverence. God is a God of reverence. We want to preserve reverence. For those of you online, the holiness of God does not change because you are online. God is holy regardless of the method of worship. If you agree, say amen. All right, favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. What a privilege to have God touch your mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I, I, the mighty God, have put my words in your mouth. Think of that. Listen to the verse again. Then the Lord, that's divine, put forth his hand, that's divine, and touched my mouth, that's human. And the Lord divine said unto me, human, behold, I divine have put my divine Word divine in thy mouth human. We have the combination of divine and human. Now God could preach the gospel himself if he chose to. Are you with me? Because with God, come on, tell me. All things are possible. But God is so nice. That's a weak word. God is so gracious. God is so magnanimous. God is so generous. God is so other focused that he has given to you and to me a privilege angels would love to have. That is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so ask God from time to time to put his words in my mouth. And favor number three, think as you listen. Think. If we would think, we would not eat some of the things we eat. If we would stop and, come on, say it loudly, think. If people would think, they would not date the people they date. Because they would see this is going in the wrong direction. If people would think, hold on to your seatbelts, they would not attend the churches they attend. If they would stop and... Isaiah 1 18, come now, let us finish it. Reason together, saith the Lord. Common sense is a major part of the religion of God. Listen to God calling us to reason. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. If ye have run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, finish it for me. How then canst thou contend with the horses? God calls upon everyone in Belize to think. Everyone online now, as you listen, to think. Because we serve a reasonable God. Listen to the verse again. Come now, let us reason together. The devil is unreasonable. God is reasonable. Say amen for God. God is a reasonable God. 
Satan is unreasonable. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I humble myself before you and ask you, please, Father, use me the way a musician uses an instrument. I offer absolutely no objection to God. I surrender myself to you for the purpose of this message. If I have offended you, dear God, forgive me. Cleanse me thoroughly that I might be a clean vessel in your hands tonight. I pray for all those who are listening, Father, in person or via the internet, wherever they are. Bless them, dear God, with a revelation of saving truth. Because Jesus, in his great prayer to you, he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So, Father, send truth to those who are listening. A special blessing, dear God, on all those who are visitors, Father. We thank you they took the time to connect with us. Bless them and put a double blessing on their children. Bless Belize. Bless the Prime Minister of Belize and all those connected with the administration of this country. Help them to make decisions, dear God, that allow the gospel to go forward. And in all the deliberations, let them remember Proverbs 14.34, Righteousness exalteth a nation. Father, for those who've contracted COVID-19, in the name of Jesus Christ, dear God, heal them. Father, I am not praying for improvement. I am asking you to heal them. Begin with members of the household of faith, but extend your mercy even to unbelievers because your word says he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. Now, Father, I commit this service to your glory. Speak through me, dear God. Speak through me, Father, please, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen and amen. What's our subject? Too slow, too slow. What's our subject? hand in hand with God. I want you to observe something about the gospel. Let us go to 1 Peter chapter 4, we'll read verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 4, reading verse 17. I wonder if I can be allowed to move to the center of the platform. Would that ruin the artistic production? No? Okay. I just feel as though I'm favoring this side over that side. I don't want to start a civil war. What book did I say? First Peter, what chapter? What verse? 17. The Bible says, and I read from the King James Version, for the time is come that judgment must begin where? At the house of God. And if it first begin with us, what shall the end be of them that do what? Obey not the gospel of God. The gospel is a product of of God. It is called the gospel of God. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's read verse 8. Our subject, hand in hand with God. 1 Thessalonians 2, reading verse 8. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted to you not the gospel of God only, but also our own selves because you were dear unto us. Here again we have the gospel referred to as the gospel of God. Verse 9, For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable to any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. When you preach the gospel, you are preaching something that originated with God. God is entrusting to you something he invented, something he created, something precious to him. Because the heart and soul of the gospel is Jesus Christ. Let's take a closer look at this gospel as we continue hand in hand with God. But let me pray again. Father... Continue to direct my words and my thinking. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans 1, verse 16. Do you have that? Find those passages as quickly as possible. This is a Seventh-day Adventist gathering. We used to be called the people of the... We're not called that anymore. Somebody ought to shed a tear. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. G Paul writes, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of? Gospel of Christ. Now it is called the gospel of Christ. We read 
In 1 Peter 4, 17, 1 Thessalonians 2, 8, 1 Thessalonians 2, 9, it's also in 1 Thessalonians 2, 2, it is the gospel of God, but now we're learning it is the gospel of Christ. Go to Galatians chapter 1. I hope you don't mind hitchhiking through the Bible. Galatians chapter 1, we'll read verses 6 and 7. If you found it, say amen. If you're still looking, say amen. We have two or three honest people. All right, hurry up. Galatians 1, verses 6 and 7. I marvel that you soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you, finish the verse now, and would pervert what? The gospel of Christ. Twice, we're told, is the gospel of Christ. Three or four times, we saw, is the gospel of God. Go to Mark, chapter 1. The book of Mark, the shortest of the four gospels. Mark, chapter 1. We'll read verse 1, our subject, hand in hand with God. Do you have Brother Mark? Chapter 1, verse 1, read for me. In the, begin, the, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, finish the verse, the Son of of God the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ and so the gospel is the gospel of God the gospel is the gospel of Christ but you will observe in Mark 1 1 the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that verse ends this way the son of God what does it mean to be the son of God let's go to John chapter 5 as we continue hand in hand with God John, my second favorite book of the Bible, is John. What question should you ask me? What's, <laughs> what's the first? Yes, it's Genesis. John chapter 5. Let's read verse, from verse 14. Jesus healed the man who had been sick 38 years at the pool of Bethesda. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to do what? Slay him. Why? Because he'd done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh and work hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, now you read with me if you have the King Version, the King James Version, but said also what? That God was his father, come on, making himself, come on, equal with God. Now, by calling himself the Son of God, Jesus declared himself to be equal with God. And the Jews understood that. That's why they tried to kill him. Because the punishment for that kind of blasphemous statement was death. Now, keeping in mind that calling yourself the Son of God meant you were equal with God, go back to Mark chapter 1. Let me slow down. I'm saying to say a lot in a little bit of time. That may not be a good strategy. What book did I say? Mark. What chapter? 1 verse 1. Father in heaven, continue to speak through me. Suppress my carnal nature that your glory becomes my only business. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mark 1 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Finish the verse. What does that tell you? That the gospel of God, no one questions the divinity of God. Are you following me? No one questions the divinity of God. But now we have Jesus. It's also his gospel. He is the son of God and that makes him what? Equal with God. And so the gospel proceeded from two divine beings. Well, three actually, but two that are mentioned. The father and the son. When you handle the gospel... You are handling something that originate with the sovereign powers in heaven. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. But let's go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. No, let's not go to Luke 4 yet. Let's go to John 3. John chapter 3. While you're looking for John chapter 3, we'll read verse 8. 
Has anyone said yet, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth? Come on. Has anyone prayed that prayer? I don't see a hand, but I hear people saying amen. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone else? You prayed for me? No, no. Ah, God, bless, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Three words. It's a prayer I offer with my eyes open. Please, the rest of you who are so attractively stubborn, pray for me during the message and say, God, put your words. Finish my word. In that man's. I need that. And that's no joke. What book did I say? John, what chapter? Three. Reading what verse? Eight. Listen carefully. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. Listen carefully. So is every one, come on, that is born of the Spirit. What is that? What's born of the Spirit? Conversion. What's another term for that? The new birth. Okay, we keep getting all the right answers on this side. This side, give me another expression for that: new birth, conversion. Give me another expression: justification by faith, or righteousness by faith. Now, listen to who accomplishes it. Listen to the verse again: "The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell with whence it cometh or whither it goeth." So is everyone that is born, come on, of the Spirit. The new birth is accomplished by the Spirit. Only God can save. Are you following me? The gospel is what God does in the life of the sinner. And the active force is the Spirit. And so it is the gospel of God. It is the gospel of, come on, it's the gospel of the Holy Spirit. Now go to Luke chapter 4. Let's read verse 18, our subject, hand in hand with God. Luke chapter 4, reading verse 18. My what says 9 o'clock. Can I have 15 more minutes? Say yes. All right, thank you. What book did I say? Luke. What chapter? 4. What verse? 18. Let me pray, Father. Please direct me, control me, and use me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because he hath done what? Anointed me to do what? Preach the gospel. Who anointed Jesus Christ to preach the gospel that originated with God? The Spirit of God. Now why am I saying all of this? We have the gospel of God, the gospel of Christ, and it is the new birth is brought about by the power of the Spirit. We have Father, Son, Holy Ghost involved in the gospel. Now, let's see something surprising. Remember our subject is what? Hand in hand with God. Go to the book of Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. We read verse 16. How many of you have the King James Version? Can I see your hand? All right. Perhaps I can have a choir of people reading this verse with me. Have you found Romans chapter 2? Verse 16. In the day when what? God shall judge what? The secrets of man. Come on. By Jesus Christ according. Ah. You notice something? What did you notice? We first saw is the gospel of, then we saw is the gospel of, then we saw the Holy Ghost is involved. Now is the gospel of whom? Paul. He calls it my gospel. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. By the way, I'm delighted to see young children in the congregation. God bless you. I really mean it. Children learn much more than you suspect. The same way they quickly learn what's bad, they can quickly learn what's good. Just put them in the right environment. And it's a sacred responsibility to raise a child for God. Either you raise it for God or for the other person you know who he is. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 8. If you find that, say amen. Read with me. What does that say? Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead. Come on. According to my gospel. So we have Paul again. This is my gospel. What do we have now? What's our subject? Hand in hand with God. The gospel originated with? The gospel originated with? 
The gospel originated with? Mm -hmm, but it's given to Paul. Not only Paul. Go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28. I'll have to preach the rest of this sermon tomorrow. Matthew 28. You have that? We read from verse 18. You should say it without looking. Am I challenging you beyond your capacity? All right. Matthew 28, reading from verse 18, King James Version. What does that say? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Stop. By the way, let me digress briefly. Are you having a difficult time on the job from your supervisor? All power is given to Christ in heaven and on your job. I heard five or six amens. All power is given to Christ in heaven and in your office. Are you with me? Always remember, regardless of the prevailing circumstances, you have a savior who has all power where? In heaven and in earth. What, did, what, did, what was the message Daniel gave to Nebuchadnezzar? The most high ruleth in the kingdoms of men and Nebuchadnezzar had to learn that and when he learned it God raised him up from seven years as an animal he had to learn the most high ruleth in the kingdoms of men when Pilate stood before Jesus or Jesus before Pilate and Pilate said whence art thou the Bible says Jesus gave him no answer John 19 9 verse 10 Pilate said unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and I have power to release thee? Yes, he had that power. Listen to Jesus in verse 11 of John 19. And Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. When you understand that, your stresses about this government or that government will cease. Romans 13 from verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. God allows certain people in positions and he takes them down. Daniel 2.21. He, he removeth kings and he setteth up kings. Your God is in final control. So your greatest concern shouldn't be your supervisor or your local council person. Your greatest concern should be, am I right with Jesus? Because when you're right with Jesus, the words of Psalm 105 verse 14 apply to you. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he rebuked kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Psalm 105, 14, 15. Don't touch them. But we're reading Matthew 28. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Now when Jesus said that, Paul was not a disciple yet. Are you with me? So he could not say then, my gospel. But Matthew can say it. John, James, Thaddeus, Cleophas. They can all say it. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you all way, even unto the end of the world. Notice the gospel you are required to teach people. Not just preach. Teach. And the, the teaching is mentioned twice. Go ye therefore and teach all nations king james version baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe teaching them how to behave say amen for behavior it's a little weak but i'll take it teaching them how to behave and lo i am with you who is with you the one who said let there be light and there was light who is with you? The one who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Who is with you? The one who said, come unto me, 
all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Who is the one that sends you? The one who said, I and my father are one. The power behind ATN is Christ. Are you with me? The creator of heaven and earth, the ruler of heaven and earth, the king of kings and lord of lords. When Melchizedek met Abraham, when he returned from a battle to release Saul from captivity, the Bible says in Genesis 14, 18, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high God. And he blessed Abram and said, blessed be Abram of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. That's Christ. In his prayer, in John 17, verse 9 and verse 10, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine. Whatever God has belongs to Jesus. John 16, verse 15, all things that the Father hath are mine. So we have the gospel of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We have the gospel of Paul. I'll give you a couple of more verses and I'll let you go tonight. Let me pray again. Father, as I am on the down slope of this message, continue to fill me with your wisdom, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Go to John 17. John was the closest disciple to Christ. Christ had three close disciples. What were their names? Peter, James, and John. By the way, some people are closer to Christ than others. You didn't like that. But no one can stop you from getting as close to Christ as possible. Are you following me? Are you with me? It's your choice. It is your choice to get close to Christ. John 17, we read from verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. It is Jesus Christ who sent ATN into Belize. That amen was weak. Come on, give me a better one. It was Christ who sent ATN into Belize. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Verse 19, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Now read verse 20 with me carefully. Do you have it? Of John 17, King James Version. What does that say? Neither pray I for these but for them also which shall believe on me, come on, through the word. Ah, Christ is praying for the 12, the 11 disciples in his presence. You know, Judas went out in John 13. That thou doest do quickly and he left. He's praying for the 11. He says in verse 9, you can look at that verse. I pray for them. I pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me. This is highly significant. Listen to me carefully. Don't let anyone distract you. Are you focused? Jesus said, I pray for them. Now you tell me, if Jesus prays for you, will God answer? Yes. Come on, give me a stronger yes. Yes! Your husband prays for you, God may not answer. Are you with me? When Jesus prays for you, the Father will answer. So Jesus said, I pray for them. That's verse 9, referring to the 11. But look at verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also we shall believe on me through their word. And the words of the disciples are in this book. You have heard the gospel, you've received it, you have believed on Jesus through their word, and you are covered by the prayer of Jesus. What's our subject? Hand in hand with heaven. The gospel is the gospel of? Is it, uh, come on. Did you have lunch? You did? 
Well, speak with energy. Oh, somebody said no. Well, fasting is good. It's the gospel of? It's the gospel of? Is the gospel of the holy? Is the gospel of Paul? And it's your gospel. It is ATM's gospel. And the power behind you when you preach the gospel, the power behind ADN or 3 ABN is the power of Jesus Christ. Something the Godhead invented. The gospel. And they have placed it in your hands. Uh, you're not following me. You're nice looking, but you're not following me. Listen to me again. Something invented. There is a painting called the Mona Lisa. It is the most heavily insured work of art on earth. It's behind bulletproof glass and this and this alarm and that alarm. And uh, it is preserved. It is precious. It was painted by Leonardo da Vinci hundreds of years ago. And... Uh, but it's precious. God provided a masterpiece called the gospel. Are you with me? In the middle of the gospel is not Mona Lisa. It is Jesus Christ. And he puts it in your hand. And he tells you, tell this to others. What higher honor can you have than to preach the gospel of God? The gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of the Holy Ghost. The gospel Paul preached. The gospel Matthew preached. And the gospel God calls you to preach. And so tonight, as God extends his hand to you, take my hand and work with me in proclaiming the gospel. How many will say, Father, I receive your hand tonight? Can I see your hand? Stand up with me quickly. Stand up with me. Hand in hand. Leave this place hand in hand with God. Not simply to preach the gospel, but to live a victorious life. Walk out of this building hand in hand with God. It's a beautiful image. You find it in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10. In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Hebrews 8 verse 9. God took them by the hand to lead them out. Let him take you by the hand. But because we're gathered in one large congregation, you may think God deals first with crowds. No, God deals first with individuals. Listen to me carefully. I'm closing. I really am. God made Adam and Eve at separate times. He did not make them together. He made Adam first. In Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Many things happened before Eve was made. Verse 8. And the Lord God planted the garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed or made. Verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight and good for food. So he provides food. He provides life in 7. A home in 8. Food in 9. From verse 10 to 14, we have the rivers that flowed out of Eden. Verse 15, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. He gave him work. 16, 17, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayst freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He gives Adam and Eve, he gives to Adam restrictions on his behavior. And the consequences for violating the restrictions. By the way, if a sinless man needed restrictions, sinful people need them even more. Verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. God provided companionship. Verse 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. God gave Adam active dominion by allowing him to name all the animals. God did not name one. All of this is going on and Eve has not yet been made. But God is interacting with Adam how? One, come on, on one. Are you listening to me? One on one. Now, in verse 21, and the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. 
I'm trying to stress the individual responsibility for the gospel. Now, God could have allowed Adam to see him create Eve. But God took him out of the picture. He was virtually dead. Because in the Bible, death is represented by a sleep. But the Bible says Adam was in a deep sleep. Then God made Eve. Adam had no clue. However long God interacted with Eve, he interacted one-on-one. -on -one. Then he raised up Adam and brought them together at the social level. They began at the individual level. Mind, character, and personality, volume 2, page 423, paragraph 2. The gospel deals with individuals. Every person must be convicted for himself, converted for himself. He must repent, believe, obey for himself. Now, you must make an individual decision to be a gospel bearer. You don't have to get into a pulpit. You can live the life of Jesus. That's one form of preaching. You can hand out the steps to Christ. You can give out some glow tracks. You can invite your neighbor to these meetings. There are ways to get involved in the gospel. You have skills. You commit them to the church of God because the skills belong to God. And so you have risen to say, Father, I take your hand. Hand in hand with God. If you're still determined to take that hand, now let me see you raise that hand. One more time. You hands, okay, hands down, Father in heaven. We thank you for your blessed people. In person and via the internet. We thank you today, God, for extending to us this glorious privilege, Father, of working with you. You have angels that can do a better job, but you have chosen us made of dirt. Ah, uh, Father... We thank you for the words in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7. We have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of man. Father, we commit ourselves to you to serve you in the gospel whatever way we can. We thank you for the beginning of this weekend of celebration for what you have done through ATN. Bless us. Let us leave this place knowing we have heard from you, not from me. Watch over us tonight, dear God. Bring us back tomorrow to this place to hear your word again and fellowship with you and with unseen angels. We pray in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen and amen.